So welcome everyone to our webinar today on conducting a literature review with Atlas TI-9 for Windows and Mac. My name is Ivan Radovojevic and I am the project coordinator with Atlas TI here in our Europe office. And today I have the pleasure of connecting with all of you to provide this global overview of Atlas TI. We're actually going to see both versions for Windows and Mac, but how we can use it for carrying out a literature review. I have also put up our contact information here and I invite everyone to take a note. And if you ever have any questions uh, concerning anything about the software, you can always count on our support. You know, just send us an email or give us a call and we'd be happy to help. The same goes for if you ever decide to purchase any license or a course, please let me know. You can reach me at either of these email addresses. You know, please let me know if you're ever interested in purchasing anything and I'll see about also offering a discount coupon. You know, we'll have different discounts available throughout the year, but I promise that I'll always look for whatever, you know, the best discount that we have currently available. So I'd like to begin by saying, what is a literature review? Just so that we're all starting on the same page here today. And well, what we mean with a literature review is simply a synthesis of work that's been previously done about our topic. And so as we do our literature review, I mean, this is something that every researcher has to engage in because the literature is what informs our research and is what our research is speaking to, right? And, but of course, you know, reading articles and just summarizing it, it might sound straightforward, but to, to write out a really good, compelling and high quality literature review, what we want to do is tell a compelling story about this literature. You know, we don't just want to list everything that's been done before, but to really bring this in to a developed argument and so that we're using the literature to develop our own arguments as we're constructing our research and showing why our research question is new and important. And so it's helpful, I think, to keep this in mind. You know, you don't want to construct a library of everything that's been done, but you want to develop your argument through your literature review. Another perhaps helpful thing to keep in mind is to remind ourselves that as we're doing a literature review, we want to describe the forest of knowledge in this topic but not every single tree inside that forest, you know? So we don't have to go into so much detail on every single article, but we do want to show our readers what's been done, you know, uh, show them what's the currently known about this topic and how we're going to contribute to that. And so that then leads me to why is the literature review so important? I mean, first and foremost, we want to avoid reinventing the wheel, you know? So one thing that we need to do as we're reading literature in our areas that we want to make sure that no one else has done what we want to do. Because of course, if it's already been done, then there might not really be a need for us to do that again. I mean, of course, there's always exceptions, right? But in general, we want to be contributing something new. Now, uh, as we're also reading the literature, we want, and as we're writing it, you know, for our readers in our final report, another goal that we have with our literature review is to describe the state of the art of knowledge. In other words, what is the current answer to your research question? You know, if you just had to answer your research question from the literature, what might we say about that? And so we first need to know what's currently known. And then once we have a grasp on that, we can identify where there are any gaps in current understanding. Is there some big oversight in the literature or is there some big disagreement between things that we still don't have a satisfying explanation or is there really a phenomenon or an issue or a question that just hasn't been looked at yet? I mean, there's so many different ways that you can identify gaps and these can be methodological or theoretical or empirical. You know, so even if someone did do research on your topic, uh, then there's no need to despair because you can also always try to find a different angle, some other kind of gap that can still meaningfully extend that knowledge. And I mean, all of this is really important because always when we're doing our research, we need to ask ourselves, how can my study advance knowledge, you know, and move the conversation forward around this topic? And that's why it's important that we show how we're contributing something new and interesting to this literature. So then how does Atlas TI fit into all of this? Well, Atlas TI is a computer assisted qualitative data analysis software. In other words, Atlas TI is a tool that we can use to facilitate our analysis of any kind of unstructured or non-numerical data. So virtually any kind of qualitative data. And of course, we always say that Atlas TI facilitates the analysis because it will not do the analysis for us. You know, there's no magic button in the software that can analyze qualitative data. I don't think any computer yet has, has become that developed. You know, still us human researchers need to read through all this text 
and make sense of it. Uh, but Atlas TI is certainly a wonderful tool that can accompany us throughout the entire process so that we can stay organized and carry out a more transparent and integrated analysis. We can also use Atlas TI for teamwork. You can combine qualitative and quantitative analyses, carry out triangulation. And of course, we can analyze a great variety of types of data. So naturally, uh, today we're going to be focusing on text data since we're interested in looking at articles. But it's also good to know that if you would like, you can also use Atlas TI to analyze images, audio recordings, videos, geographic data, tweets from Twitter, uh, notes from Evernote, survey data from Excel. And of course, what's interesting for us today is that you can import references from a bibliographic reference manager. And then Atlas TI can even automatically organize these references for you. So all these different kinds of data can be put in the same project so that you can analyze the overarching patterns and trends. And so I'm seeing here, we have a question, uh, if we can use this uh, for systematic reviews. So I'm not going to be talking in particular about systematic reviews. In fact, I, I'll be talking about literature reviews in general, rather than one particular methodology. Uh, but because I want to give ideas for everyone, right? More than anything, I want to maybe plant some seeds in your mind so you can start thinking about how you can adapt Atlas TI. And so, well, we'll see throughout it. Maybe uh, we can think of some ideas there. But yeah, just to let you know, the focus here is really just, um, you know, on a broad kind of approach to literature reviews so that you can later then tweak it and adjust it to your own projects. And so today we're gonna to be seeing Atlas TI version nine. This is our latest generation of the software. Uh, but of course, Atlas TI has been around for many decades now. And today, if you get an Atlas TI license for version nine, you'll have access to all of our platforms because we have Atlas TI for Windows and Mac. And these have 100% compatibility between them. So you can even move projects back and forth. Or if you work in a team with a mix of computers, you can certainly count on Atlas TI. We also have Atlas TI Web. And this is a completely online version of the software. And so instead of downloading any software to your computer, you just need an internet connection and you log into your account and you can keep working on your project. And so this is also another interesting option that you can use. And it's also great for teamwork since, since you're online. Uh, but then we also have an Atlas TI app for Android tablets or iPads. Now this, this mobile app of Atlas TI is always offered for free, whether or not you have a license. So if you do have a tablet, then you can go to the Google Play Store or the Apple Store and download Atlas TI. And then that can also be interesting if you're on the go and you want to start putting your project together and you can work from there. And then any project from the mobile version or the web version can be exported and then imported into the desktop versions. So you can keep working on it here. You know? So you also have that kind of uh, movement between them. And so then just a little a bit of information about, uh, about the licenses. And so if you purchase a license for Atlas TI-9, this includes access to the desktop versions, that's Windows and Mac, and the web version. And so we have different licenses, just depending on your role, you know, if you're a student or a professor or working in a private organization or an NGO. Uh, but, so, and so, you know, it's just different price ranges. Of course, students have much more affordable prices. And you can get this for a period of six months or two years. While all the other kinds of licenses, you can always choose if you want to purchase it once and own it forever, or you can lease the license. And in that case, you will pay for every year that you want to use Atlas TI. So these leases are on a yearly basis, and that's to have access to all of the platforms. Now, on the other hand, if you have tried out Atlas TI Web and actually it's you know, perfectly suitable for your needs and you only want to use the web version, you can also get a web only license. And in this case, this is a monthly subscription. So you pay every month that you want to use it. And of course you can stop whenever you'd like. So basically you just decide, do you want access to also desktop or just the web version? And then that way you can see which license to get. Now this is uh, very briefly about the licenses. And I see that uh, we have a question about the student license. Can it be renewed after two years? Absolutely, yes. So the student licenses ha is the only license that has this kind of expiration. Well, actually, if you're leasing, you also have the expiration, but this fixed period, uh, but it can always be extended. So if the six months or these two years pass, but you're still studying, 
naturally. You can request an extension for another two years and another two years. There's no limit on how many times you can extend it. You'll just be asked to, to verify your student status again, you know, just to prove you are still studying. But yes, absolutely. You can count on Atlas TI for the entire duration of your studies. And, um, and if you do want to get started with Atlas TI today and already start with your project, then you can always download the free trial version. And so with the free trial, uh, you can already begin your project. You have unlimited access for five days. Actually, you choose which five days. Maybe it's one day today, one day next week, one day the next week. Uh, but in total, you get five days. And you can start your project there without any limitations. And then even when your free trial is done, your project will still stay saved. You know, it'll still be there and you can open it and view it. You just will not be able to save any changes. But then when you get your own license and you activate it, then you can continue working on that same project. And so I think this is nice, you know, meanwhile, you're deciding which license to get or something like this. You know, if you want to already get going today, you can definitely do that with the free trial version. And then aside from the licenses, I also just wanted to briefly point out that on our website, I encourage you all to explore. We have a lot of different learning resources there. Uh, so for example, if you and your team or, or classmates, you know, or a group of students want to learn more about Atlas TI, you can request a free on-demand group demo webinar. And so it'd be like a webinar that we're here today, but you can tell us, you know, if you want some personalized content so we can go into more detail about something in particular and we can hold this on whatever day and time suits you and your group best. On the other hand, if you want to learn Atlas TI in even more depth, you could always attend one of our premium trainings. And we offer these online in real time, just like we are here today. And we also have self-paced courses. And so we have a lot of different options there on Mac and Windows. And like I said, we have a literature review course as well. Uh, but upon completing any of our premium trainings, you will also receive an official certificate from the Atlas TI Academy. And then aside from the trainings, you can see the full software manual that has all the information you could possibly want to find about Atlas TI. Uh, we also have a research blog where we regularly post like best practices articles and tips or interviews with real world researchers. And also what I would particularly recommend are our video tutorials. And so we have a lot of video tutorials and they're very short but each one goes into one specific aspect of the software. You know, so after seeing today's webinar, uh, I mean, I don't expect you all to learn and remember everything we're gonna see today because it'll be a lot of information in a relatively short amount of time. But I at least want you all to have an idea of what kinds of things you can do with Atlas TI. And then when you get going with your own literature review and you're working in the software, maybe you remember, oh, there was this one tool that I know I can use, but I can't remember how it works. And then that's when you can go and take a look at a video tutorial and get a quick refresher so that you can see that there. So we have all these resources here on our website. You can also see us on YouTube, for example. So I definitely encourage you to explore that. Uh, and all that being said, you know, if you do ever have any questions or doubts, you can always count on our support. Uh, just give us a call or send us an email and we'd be happy to help. So then without any further ado, why don't we go ahead now and take a look at Atlas TI. And so I'm going to begin with Atlas TI for Mac, and then we'll move on to Atlas TI for Windows in the second part. And so you'll see that both have all the same features. Uh, the, it's just the main difference is how they look. And this is because the Mac version was as a native Mac program developed by Mac uh, coders and programmers. So it looks different, but all the features are the same. So when we open Atlas TI-9, we have this nice welcome screen where we can see all the projects that we have on our computer, but we can also see latest news, access these video tutorials and all these other resources so we get more information. But to create a new project, we're just gonna click here. And for today, I'm gonna do a little literature review on diversity, this notion of cultural diversity in the workplace. So we give a title to our project, right? Give it some kind of descriptive title. And let me open it up here. Let's see my computer. I can see it's struggling a little bit with the zoom here, but uh, I'll just give it a second. And so I wonder, in fact, uh, how many Mac users do we have here today? 
Okay, one, two. Okay, okay. So we do have a few. Three, four. All right, great. So we're yeah. <laughs> no, that's great here. I think it's good to see definitely that we get to see both. And wow, this is a strange. It's uh, freezing up here. If anything, what we can also do is start with Windows, but I'm just gonna uh, refresh this here. So I think my computer is running low on space and then everything has been going slowly for me today. Let's just see if I can open it and close it again. My apologies. Okay, I think we're back. Here we go. Yes. So now we've created our project. It really does not usually take that long, but uh, of course it always depends on the computer. And I see mine is sweating <laughs> right now. Uh, but all right, so here we are inside at STI. And well, in the Mac version, like I said, this is a native Mac software. So just like any other Mac software, you know, you have all the menus here at the top. So this is where you can find all the options. But then here, you know, inside, we also have just kind of shortcuts so we can see the most frequently used kinds of functions. On the left-hand side, we have the Project Explorer panel, and we have this in both Mac and Windows. So this is a kind of one of the core parts of the project, because this is where we can see and directly access any part of our project. And so, for example, we can see the first thing we have on the list are documents, and we have zero documents, of course. Uh, and uh, so what is a document then in Atlas TI? Uh, well, as you might be able to guess, <laughs> our documents refer to any source of information that we want to analyze. So our documents are our data or our articles. And so we can click right here to add our documents to our project. So when you get your articles, you download them to your computer, and then we can add them here. And so I have some articles here. So I'll just go ahead and select them all. And then we import them. And yeah, I see a piece of advice about doing a back-to-back -back updates. Mm, yeah, on the computer. I'll definitely check that after the webinar. Thank you. <laughs> and so then we can add these in our articles now, and we can add as many as we want. There's never any size limitations in Atlas TI. Ultimately, it depends on how much your computer can handle, really. So we'll put these in now. And so this is the normal way to add files into Atlas TI that you just go to documents and then add them in. But we can also, uh, so if you're also using a bibliographic reference manager, like uh, Mendeley or Zotero or EndNote, you can also export your references from there and then import them into Atlas TI. And so that's a, an alternative way to add your articles to your project. And so you can use uh, any bibliographic reference manager. The only important thing is that you are able to export the articles in XML format. So as long as it allows you to export them in XML, then you'll be able to import them into Atlas TI. And so that's the only thing to really check there. There we go. <laughs> so I see, can you import from RefWorks? I'm not familiar with RefWorks, but if it gives you an option to export in XML, then yes, you ought to be able to. And then if you're gonna use this option, so first you'll export your articles, and then you just go to the document menu and import, and you have reference manager data here. And so this is where you can choose the file. And you see here, it also tells you EndNote XML file is what you need to export. So as long as RefWorks allows that, then yes, you can definitely do that. And then what's great when you use this option, is that it can also automatically create groups of your articles based on any of these parameters. You know, you wanna to group together the articles that come from the same year, from the same publisher, and you just take the boxes here. And it can also rename the, art, the documents for you 
to include the first author's name in the publishing year. And so this is also some helpful information. So if you have a lot of sources, and I mean, this can certainly be a helpful way to get it all in and organized, but also, of course, we can just add them in this normal way. And then we can see we have all of our articles and we can open up and view them. And so that's how we add our documents. So a few tips here for the literature review before we get into reading and analyzing. Uh, you know, often when we download things from the internet, they, they tend to have some kind of nonsense name, you know, some downloader or just a jumble of letters and numbers. It's not really anything meaningful for us. And so something that we always recommend is to take a moment when you do add your articles to give them descriptive names. So if we take a look here on the right-hand side in Atlas TI Mac, we have this inspector panel. And this panel simply serves to provide more detailed information about whatever object you just clicked on. You know, so anything you click on, the inspector panel adjusts and tells you, now I've clicked on document three, you see the name, you see some more details. And here we have document one. But the great thing about this inspector panel is that we can directly edit any of this information. So in this case, I actually previously already organized these and that's why they appear nicely. But uh, what I always do with literature reviews and what I recommend for everyone is to rename documents with the information that you would use to cite that article. So usually that's the author's surnames, the publishing year. Maybe you also want to put some keywords so you know what the article is about. But definitely I think this information is important so that whenever you're writing your own notes about it, you know how to refer to this article. You know, you're already helping yourself uh, for the literature review write-up. Now down below, we have the comment space. And every single individual object in Atlas TI has its own comment space. And you can think of this as like a sticky note that's always going to be attached just to this object. And so we can use these comment spaces to provide more detailed information about this object in particular. So another tip when it comes to writing the literature review is to use this space to jot down the full reference for the article. And usually, you know, wherever we're downloading our articles from, there's somewhere in that website or that database, uh, the, the full citation. And so you just, then you can just click and copy paste it. And then I always like to just paste it right here. And then even just to hide, you know, grab the, the name and the title there and put that into the, into the document's name here. But I mean, however you prefer to get your full references, uh, definitely the comment space of documents is the perfect place to write that information down. And then since we did also talk about, we briefly mentioned document groups that, you know, when you import your references at this can group them for you. And indeed, of course, we can also create our own groups. And so, so we're still talking here about just organizing the information before we begin, but you know, let's imagine we've added a lot of different articles and I have them from different journals and I'd like to organize that. So whenever we want to do this kind of more organizing work with our information, then we're gonna open up the manager of that object. So actually all every entity in Atlas TI has its own manager. And if I want to organize my documents, I'm going to open the document manager. And we have that right here. And so with the manager, we see all the documents in our project and we get some more detailed information on each one. But what's really interesting for us here is that on the left hand side, we can see the groups. So now we don't have any, but we can create as many groups as we want. Any single document can belong to more than one group. So, you know, let's imagine uh, if let's let's imagine these articles come from the Academy of Management. So I want to group those together. So you just select the documents you want to group and then drag and drop it to the left-hand side. And then when we let go, we can give a name to this group. And so everything we're doing so far is the same with Atlas TI Windows. The only difference is that Windows does not have this uh, panel on the right side, but you can always click on the left side to edit uh, comments or names or open up the document manager uh, to also work on it here. So, I mean, everything that we're doing is the, it does work in the same way. And so like this, we get our document group created. And I definitely need to do some updates, I believe here, but okay, we're, we're moving along. So we can give it any kind of name that we would like. 
And so it's just a matter of selecting the documents and dragging and dropping. And then uh, you can even, and you can also add documents to existing groups just by dragging and dropping them in. And so when it comes to creating groups for your literature, if you, you know, you want to, you might want to think, well, what kind of organization will make sense for me? You know, am I interested in looking at different journals or maybe comparing research from different years or ranges of, of years, like more recent or older ones? Or maybe you have literature on kind of different concepts or that look at different perspectives or theories. So, I mean, we can create as many groups as we want. And so you can organize them how you'd like. And it helps, what groups are useful for is to organize all the information because we can see, uh, we can focus on a given group at a time. You know, I just wanna look at articles from this journal. So it helps us stay organized. And also groups are great to work as filters. And so then we can also really easily compare and contrast between groups, or if we just wanna focus on information coming from a particular group, and so, you know, maybe keeping that in mind, then you can think about what kinds of groups you want to create that'll help you with your literature if you don't. And so now let's go ahead and close this. And so now that we've created some groups, you can also see these in the left-hand panel. And so if you want to just focus on some from a particular group, then you can also just look at it there. So then how do we actually analyze the literature in Atlas TI? So now we're getting to the, to the actual nitty gritty analysis here, right? Uh, so we can open up any of our articles and we're gonna start reading. And then whenever you come across anything that captures your attention, something that can help you answer your research question, you know, something relevant for your literature review, all you have to do is highlight that segment of the text. And you can highlight as much or as little as you want. You know? So it's very flexible. Now to save this highlighted segment, what we can do here is right click, and then we have some different options. If we just want to save this highlighted segment, we can just create the quotation. And so we click here, and then a blue vertical bar appears here on the right-hand side in the margin area, and that's showing us the size and location of a quotation in our document. So a quotation in Atlas TI just refers to any segment of information that we have selected and saved. And yes, yeah, so I, we have some questions of how did you get the sidebar of to inspect? So this should appear automatically when you open Atlas TI Mac, but also in the view menu, you can choose. So the navigator is the left-hand one, the inspector is the right-hand one, which is only available in, in Mac. And then the margin is this area next to the document. So the margin area is where we can see all the work we did in our articles. And so all of these panels can be closed, opened, made larger, smaller. So it is really uh, adjustable in that sense. But yeah, I hope that that helps. And then finally, we have a question. Can one document appear in multiple groups? Absolutely, yes. And so uh, you can even, once you have groups created, you can even keep uh, grouping them here. You, you can drag and drop them. And so now we can see that now this document is going to be in both of these groups. So yeah, really flexible. I mean, Atlas TI, it's always designed with this philosophy that it's, uh, you know, it doesn't impose any kind of methodology or structure on us. It's really the idea that every researcher can build up their project however they want. But okay, so now we have our uh, blue vertical bar here showing the size and location of a quotation in this document. So we can go through selecting quotations. Now on the one hand, if we just wanna go through highlighting, we can also show them here. If we just wanna go through highlighting, we can do that. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, as we're already reading the literature, maybe we also want to start saving our analysis of these different segments of information and start organizing all of these bits of, of information we're finding. And so to do that, we can associate codes with our quotations. Now a code is simply a word or a short phrase that's describing something we're seeing in the literature. Again, we can make as many codes as we want. So it's really up to us just to, to code this information in whatever way will make sense for us. So for example, you know, maybe as you're going through, you see, uh, you know, one common thing in any literature review, we always have our 
research topic and some main keywords that we're interested in. And then it's important to also clearly define these keywords. And so for, in my case, for example, this here would be diversity. And then let's imagine here that uh, the author is defining diversity and how it's studied. And then I say, oh, this is really interesting. I wanna capture how they defined my keyword. And so we can highlight that segment, right click. And this time I'm gonna go straight to apply codes because now we're going to attach codes to our quotations. You know, maybe it's also to even helpful to think of codes as tags that we're gonna go attach into everything to organize it. So when we click on apply codes, this coding window appears where we can uh, create any code that we would like. And so, well, in this example, right, I'm, I'm coding this information because it provides a definition of one of my main keywords, which in my case is diversity. So you type whatever kind of code name you want to, to add here, and then you can press enter on your keyboard or click on this plus button. And then Atlas TI saves this quotation. It created this new code for us and it's attached this code to our quotation. And so it's as easy as that. And now we'll see that we have this code appear on the left-hand side. And also whenever we use this, uh, whenever we're coding in Atlas TI and we open this coding window, It'll also show us all the codes we have in the project. And so we can easily reuse any codes. And so I, th and, and so, I mean, here, as we can see, coding is pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, we're just attaching tags to our quotations. I think what's more challenging is to decide which codes to create and attach. And there, I think it's, again, really important to always keep in mind, what is our research question? You know, what are our research objectives? So that as we're reading the literature, you know, we are being, we're staying focused and not getting lost in all the information. I mean, it's important to keep an open mind, but also we do want to be moving in some sort of direction. And that's why the research question is just always so crucial. And so maybe then, you know, if you see interesting things about your research topic, you want to code for that. It could be different topics or questions, uh, anything about the state of the art, right? What is currently known? I, I think it's also helpful to code for definitions of important keywords. And along these lines, we can also code for any gaps that are ever mentioned. And so usually, uh, usually at the ends of articles and one of the more final sections, the authors start talking about limitations of the current research and suggestions for further research. And these are effectively gaps that the authors are mentioning. And they're saying, okay, we out of this, we know this now, but there's still all of this that is still remains to be explored, that we still don't know about these things. And so when you see the author saying that kind of thing, they say, oh, okay, they're mentioning a gap here. And so again, you can highlight that, add codes, and then we can have a code for gap. And maybe you even want to specify what kind of gap or what is it exactly that they're saying. And so then we can save all the different gaps that are mentioned in all our different articles. And then later it's really easy to tell Atlas TI, okay, show me all of the different kinds of theoretical gaps that we found. And with the click of the mouse, you know, it'll make a report for us so we can see all that information. So I, that's why I think it's helpful to think of these tags, right? That we're kind of bookmarking all this information so we can easily see it again. And again, this is just advice for literature reviews in general, but going back to our earlier question about systematic reviews, you know, if you are following a, a particular literature review methodology, and I think you should definitely think about how you can adapt that into how you code the literature. And so are you interested in comparing uh, methods that were used in this area? Well, in that case, I think you'll definitely be interested in going to the methods sections of your articles and code. Was this a survey? Did they use interviews? Did they do an experiment? And then you can make codes for all of that. Uh, similarly, maybe you want to code what theories are being used. So any information that you're interested in, you can code for it. And then it's really easy to compare across all your articles, which ones use this method or that method, or what were main findings or what were theories that were used. It all just depends on what information we code for. And so coding is a really important part of the analysis process because this is how we start to organize everything. You know, it makes it a lot easier uh, to retrieve any of this information and we can even then later examine patterns among the codes or frequencies of codes across all the articles. So it allows us to also kind of take a step back and looking at this, you know, from a, a more abstract perspective, perhaps. But coding is not 
everything, <laughs> there's another very important part of the analysis here. And that's, you know, as we're going through and reading the literature, we also have a lot of ideas that are going through our head, right? You know, maybe I think, oh, this is interesting what the author is saying, or, oh, I don't agree with this, or I would do this in a different way. I mean, we have all sorts of things that go through our mind. And of course, it'd be great to be able to write down these ideas somewhere and our own notes and thoughts. Well, this is exactly where memos come in. So a memo is essentially a notebook. It's a blank space that we can use to write down anything that we would like. And so we can create a new memo just by clicking here. And again, we can make as many memos as we want. And maybe uh, one thing that we like to do, well, for example, one memo I think that goes for any research project is a research diary, basically where we just document what we're doing every day. And that way we can keep track of our whole, pro our, our whole process. And so this is really important because research projects last months, if not years. And so it's important to document you know, what we're doing. And if we ever need to go back, we have that uh, sort of audit trail as well to see what we were doing and why we did that. But you also might want to create a memo for each of your research questions. And then whenever you find information about it, you can write it down in the memo there. And so here we have our memo and it's just a blank space. It's just like any text editing program. So you can edit the font and structure and so on. A really nice feature as well that we have here, if you press command D on your keyboard or in Windows, there's just a button at the top, you insert the date and time. And so this is great for keeping track, right? And then we can write here our own notes or descriptions of what we're seeing, what we're doing, but also our own critical analysis where we start to dig deeper into the literature and you know, maybe uh, take a more questioning approach to what we're seeing and think about how might we improve or build on what we're reading about, as well as our own reflections and insights. Uh, but we can also use memos just to keep a list of our tasks that we need to do or major milestones we want to keep up with or just to jot down ideas or questions that come to our mind that we want to follow up later. So it's a very flexible thing that we can apply, but I just encourage you all that whenever something comes across your mind, take a moment and jot it down in a memo. So let's imagine here, I'm going to, of course, it's also helpful to give your memos a more descriptive title than just memo. Uh, let's say here, I use this memo to write about different ways of defining diversity, because this is such a actually difficult to define concept. And I can say, oh, I find it interesting how raw person 2019, we know how to refer to it because we have the title. And, you know, write down our ideas here. And we don't have to write perfectly. Uh, I mean, these memos are really just for us. No one else has to see it later on when we do the final literature reviews where we can polish everything up. But what's really important is that we're just putting our ideas down. And, uh, and it's through writing that we really are analyzing. And that's why it's just a very, it's good to force ourselves to, to put our thoughts into words. So let's imagine here, I've written my ideas about this memo. And you know, it was this quotation in particular that inspired my thoughts that we wrote about in that memo. So we're going to want to remember that this memo was talking about this quotation, right? Well, just like we can associate codes to our quotations, we can also associate memos. And so we can see everything here on the left-hand side. And then the wonderful thing about this is that we can also just drag and drop anything we have here onto our quotations. And the same goes for the codes. You know, once you have them created, you can also just drag and drop your codes onto your quotations. And so this is really the foundation of the analysis is that we go through selecting segments of information, associating our codes and writing in our memos. You know, and if we do this part well, then everything else will be a whole lot easier. <laughs> and then we can use all the different tools and so on. And so now let's move on over to Atlas TI for Windows for the rest of our presentation. And, um, and let's, let's take a look if we have also some better luck with it working a little faster. Well, we can see here, I have the same project open, but here in this project, I've done a bit more analysis. And so, but we have the same Explorer panel on the left-hand side, so you can see everything in your project and open it up. Here we have an article, and we can see on the right-hand side, all of the quotations that were saved, the codes and the memos that were attached. And it's the same idea that you just right-click to add codes or create quotations, or you just drag and drop from the left-hand side. 
and then you'll add documents under the home tab. And if you want to import your references, you just go to import and export. So it's really similar, it's just the interface is different. Now, we've been looking at this kind of manual analysis, but there are also other tools that can help us with exploring literature. And you know, let's imagine we've just added these articles here, but we haven't yet read them. And before going into full you know, depth and detail with each one, I just wanna have a quick global overview of what are these articles about? So we can conduct content analyses here by creating word lists or word clouds. And so you just click on the button that you're interested in. And then Atlas CI will generate a word cloud for us showing all of the words appearing in this article and, and we can easily see which ones are appearing more or less frequently. And so the word cloud is a great way to explore. And then you have all these additional options up here to adjust it or to put stop lists or goal lists. And we can save this as an image. And so that's also something interesting to maybe even include in your memos or in your final report or presentation. And we can also look at multiple articles here. So you can see, you know, just broadly, what are the main concepts that are coming up in the literature? And then for example, I can see here, I'm gonna go back to this first article. So they're talking a lot about diversity, but a lot about learning. So this is something I think is interesting. I mean, I expect them to talk about diversity in business, but I wonder what they're saying about learning. So let's imagine, you know, uh, you want to search for a particular word in any of your articles. Well, then we can use our search and code tools here. Remember everything that I'm showing here is also the same in Mac. It's just all, you'll find it in the menus at the top. But so if we wanna look for a particular word, then we can go to search and code and use the text search tool. So let's open this up and see how this can help us. So the first thing we tell out STI is which documents do we want to look in? And we can select individual documents or groups. If I just wanna see all of the documents inside this group. And then we click continue. And here we tell Atlas TI, what word do we want it to search for? And Atlas TI will look for this word in this article and every time it finds it, it'll automatically highlight a quotation for us and then we can associate codes to all these finds. So we can also tell Atlas TI what context to search in or what size quotation should it select. For example, I like the sentence where this appears. But also a really helpful feature is that we can add any synonyms. And so sure, I wanna see what they say about learning but maybe also, uh, I'm not interested in just this word, I'm interested in the idea, you know, also comprehending, understanding. And so we can add as many synonyms as we would like here. And you can even add additional words. You know, do I wanna see learn and leader in the same sentence? And then of course you can specify that search and you can tell Atlas TI, I'll oh, look at that, I've already pressed enter. <laughs> you can tell Atlas, and we actually have results on learning and leaders. Uh, but what I mean to point out here is that we can add additional words and you can specify whether you want both of these words to appear in the same sentence or it can be either of them and still again synonyms and even more words. So I mean, as always, it's a very flexible tool so you can use it in whatever way you'd like and build whatever kind of search queries you'd like. This is also a very helpful feature that we can include inflected forms. And then basically what this means is Atlas TI looks at this root word and it'll also capture any variations of it. So learn, but also learning, learned, you know, so just all the different forms, but it's the same word. So yes, I do want to capture those. So once we've built up our search, then we can show results. And now Atlas TI will show us all of the sentences in this article where this word appears or any of the synonyms. And then we can take a look and we can decide whether we want to individually code them you know we can just read through and add codes as we would like so here we see the results we can see these sentences with the word and we have the same margin area on the right side again and so we can right click to add our codes make a new code or use an existing code so just like when we were working in a document we have that same logic here or on the other hand we can select certain quotations or all of the quotations. And then at the top, we can choose to apply a code to all of them in one go. And then create maybe a new code name here. And then Atlas TI attaches this code to all of those quotations. So with text search, you can search for any word in any of your documents. 
And it's a huge help if you know what you're looking for and then you can already save all those quotations. So even something like definitions of keywords and maybe you just look for your keyword and then you can save all of those there. So I think text search is a really helpful tool for the literature review. We also have regular expression search. This is basically a more advanced form of text search. And if you're familiar with using grep or building search strings, then you can definitely do that here if you're interested in this kind of thing. Uh, in my personal experience, I've never used regular expression search because the text search is more than enough, right? We can build all sorts of searches there and it is a little bit more intuitive. Uh, but definitely if you're familiar with grep and search strings, then you have this tool as well that you can use. Now we have two other tools here that I won't go into because I don't know about their applicability to literature reviews, but just so you are also aware, these are other kinds of automatic coding tools uh, where Atlas TI can go by itself and search for any entities that are mentioned in the articles. And so by this, what we mean is it'll search for any time a person a place, an organization, or any, any other kind of entity is mentioned. It can be like works of art or cultural objects. And then it's the same idea. It can automatically save quotations and associate codes for you. So about people, places, organizations, or other things, it can automatically capture those. And then sentiment analysis, similar idea, but in this case, it's going through and looking for any time a positive, negative, or neutral sentiment is being expressed in the, in the text. So it's kind of the idea to look at what tone are participants using when they talk about something or what entities are they mentioning. Now, I don't know, you know, maybe for your literature review, you are interested in people, places and things. And so then you can definitely use this. Uh, but certainly, I mean, we also have those video tutorials and information. If you'd like to look more into that, if we have time at the end, we can also show it. But I certainly think that the word cloud or word list and then the text search tool can be really helpful for the literature review, especially when you're just kind of exploring to see what's out there. And then we can go through and read everything in more detail and write in our memos, but certainly I think these tools can help. So let's take a look at some other uh, analysis tools that we have here. And, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm just saying here, we have a few questions. So are about any limitations on memos? No, you can make as many memos as you'd like. They can be as long as you want as well. And that's the same with documents. There's no limit to how many documents can be added. Now, as for using lexical search for literature reviews, uh, can you maybe explain what you mean exactly by lexical search? Is that different to the text search here? But yeah, if you can explain, I'd be happy to maybe give advice on how you can adapt that. And then you're also asking about comparing the word cloud output of two documents. So Absolutely, yeah, you can open multiple word clouds side by side and see those or save the image if you want to look at them or look at one word cloud with all of them. So I mean, yeah, from here on, you can build any kinds of analyses that you would like to see. Now, another uh, really helpful thing here that we can do in Atlas TI. So we have some other analysis tools that we can use once we've uh, coded all of the articles and we can find them here under the Analyze tab. And so if we wanna search for any quotation in our project, we can use the query tool. And with this tool, we can tell Atlas TI that we wanna see quotations based on any of our individual codes or code groups. And so from any of the managers, we can export reports. If I, you know, we can tell Atlas TI, show me all the quotations attached to this code. And we can do these reports in any of the managers. But what's great about this query tool is that we can conduct more complex uh, reports and queries. You know, so maybe, for example, in this literature review, we were coding for different successful practices for, for managing diversity in the workplace. And we have 13 codes, 13 different kinds of successful practices that were mentioned. You can see them here. And I want to see all the different successful practices that we, that we found. So we can double click on the code group. And then we load it in the query space and we see all the quotations below. So all the quotations associated with any of the codes inside this group. And so this is already an interesting result that we can see, but with the query tool, we can also make these nice combinations using any of these operators here at the top. Now we don't need to memorize how each one works because you can see there's always this information that appears and you have the little icon to show it. But also we have plenty of video tutorials and going into more detail on these. But let's say, let's imagine that, you know, I want to see 
what kinds of su successful practices researchers talked about when it comes to diversity in the workplace and how might this be related to different uh, opportunities, right? So I don't just want to see all the successful practices that were mentioned, but I also want to see what opportunities are related with these successful practices. So in other words, to put it in Atlas TI terms, we want to see quotations that contain one of the codes in this group and one of the codes in this group. And then we can also drag and drop it. And so we can build the query like this. And then if we click on the intersection here on our operator, oh, I see I actually don't have anything. Oh, and that's because I clicked on the wrong group. But that's also fine because we can delete an operator and now I'll grab the right one and put it on. And then we can see the results. So it's also very dynamic, the query tool. You know, you can move things around and see what you get. And so now it's only showing us quotations that have one of these codes and one of these codes. And so we can make as many combinations as we would like here, you know, and you can kind of pose your research question and see what answer you get. But now to save this result, we can click on this report button to save this as a report. And with these report windows, we just tell Atlas TI what information do we want included. So we can have a lot of detailed information or keep it as simple as we want. So for example, I wanna see the content of the quotations, absolutely. I wanna see what codes are attached. And I wanna see definitely if I have any memos, I wanna see the memo. And if you click on this drop down arrow, you open up this list with even more options. And I wanna see the content of my memos. So these reports, this is similar to what you, uh, the reports, you'll have this option in all the managers. And so they're really customizable reports. So you can export any information you'd like. And then we create the report and it puts together all this information for us in one single document. And we can save this as a Word or a PDF file. And then that's also something, if you wanna save it as a backup or share it with someone else or attach an appendix. Okay, great. So, so I'm happy that the lexical search, yeah, that was answered. And, um, and yes, about looking in a network. Yes, we'll, we'll get to that now. Um, yeah, I do apologize for this. It has, my computer has never been this slow before. I'll definitely take a look now. But, uh, but yes, it's, I'm afraid it slowed us down a little bit. But yes, yeah, so here we can see the report. Okay, and so it's showing us exactly the query that this is. And here's our first quotation. So it first gives us exactly where this quotation comes from, what the quotation is, what codes we have attached, and we can see the, the definitions of our codes, and in this case, no memos. And so we can scroll through, here's our second quotation. So we see all of these results based on this query. So basically what opportunities and successful practices were mentioned together in the literature review. So with the query tool, you can search for any quotation in your project. Next, let's take a look at the code co-occurrence table. So here, what we're gonna look at is which codes are appearing together across our literature and how many times are they appearing together? And that's what we mean by co-occurrence. So we build a table and put codes in rows and columns. And so we just tell here at Atlas TI what we want in the columns and the rows. So I'm gonna stick with the same example, you know? So we saw there was one way I could see what successful practices were related to, to the different opportunities that diversity brings. But we can also look at this here in this table form. And so I'm gonna select all the codes about successful practices and all my codes about opportunities. So we just tick the boxes here. And then Atlas TI builds the co-occurrence table and a Sankey diagram for us. And so for the moment, let's just take a look at the table just to understand what we're seeing here. What it's showing us is that this code appears two times together with this code. And this code appears once with this code. And if you click on the cells, you can actually see the information behind these numbers. We see the actual quotations. So it seems that when uh, authors were talking about actively working against discrimination, it seems that this was related to greater team satisfaction, higher quality work and performance and more equality, right? So this makes sense. But we get to get this idea of 
which codes are appearing together across our literature here. This means that either they're on the same quotation or they're in overlapping quotations, but they're appearing together somewhere. And when we see high co-occurrences, we might want to ask ourselves, why is that? You know, may, is there some underlying relationship or explanation between these things? And so this is also a moment to open up a memo. We can write our interpretations there. If you want to save this table, you can export it to Excel. But the other very exciting feature of Atlas TI-9 are the Sankey diagrams. So this is the exact same information, but shown in this wonderful visual format. And so we can see about uh, having access to more diverse customer bases, you know, what, what successful practices were related with this. Or if we want to use cultural differences as a source of learning, what kinds of opportunities is this related with? And so you can see these links. And always when you click, you see the quotations on the right side. And so the, and obviously the wider the lines, the higher the frequency of the co-occurrence. And at the top, you have more options for working with this and editing it, but I think this is a great way to explore the analysis. So code co-occurrence lets us see which codes are appearing together and how frequently. And then it's up to us to interpret this, right? And, and like I said before, I'm, I wanna show you all these tools so that you're aware of what kinds of things you can do, but then that doesn't mean you have to use every single tool in your own projects. But so if you want to look at that, you have that there. Now here we have our third tool, the code document table. And this is another table, another helpful tool. And with this, what we can look at is code frequencies across any of our documents. So maybe I want to see how many times were these different opportunities mentioned. So I want to see the frequency of every individual code. And now we can select what uh, articles to look in. But actually, I want to compare between those articles that were arguing for the business case for diversity, you know, basically saying that more diversity in the workplace will lead to greater profits. And I want to compare what these kinds of uh, studies said in comparison to studies that were arguing against this business case and saying that it doesn't make sense to argue for diversity because of financial benefits. And so again, we see a table and a diagram. I'll just focus on the table for one minute. But we can see here that this is showing us that this code appears three times in the articles in this group and zero times in the articles in this group. So we get code frequencies, but we get this great bird's eye view that we can very easily compare between groups. So this is one of the things I was talking about at the beginning, how groups are really helpful if you do want to do these kinds of comparisons, because now we can see. And you know, it's interesting that there are some differences that those that are arguing for the business case talk about accessing customers, while those who are against it talk about accessing more employees. You know, so already there's some interesting interpretations that we can draw here that we could write down in a memo. And naturally you can click on a cell to see the quotations behind it. And what's also great is that at the top you have some more helpful information. So for example, if you have really unbalanced groups, you can normalize the count so that you can actually directly compare the numbers or you can binarize if you just wanna see yes or no. Uh, and you can look at relative frequencies. And so I think this is also something really interesting to help us get kind of more fine-grained analysis here. And again, we can export this to Excel. And again, we can see the Sankey diagram. And so it's the same information, but in this visual format. And so then we can very quickly and easily see what are the main codes that have been used in all our different documents or document groups. So the code document table lets us look at code frequencies across our project. And now finally, when we are doing the literature review and going through all these different tools, writing our notes and our memos, and we have all these ideas, then of course, it's also really helpful to kind of map out all these different ideas and how they're connected. And so this is where we can create networks. And so we can create a new network under the home tab and the new entities so we can make our new network here. And so now maybe I want to look at, um, for example, we could even make a network to explore the different definitions that we identified. So in the network is a blank space and we can visualize any part of our project in a network. So I'm gonna start with codes since I do have codes about different definitions here. And we can bring these in just by clicking, dragging and dropping. And that's how we can add objects to our network. And so now 
or maybe I just actually want to focus on my diversity definitions. You know, I don't need to look at all of these right now. So we can also just remove them from the network. And so we have our code here. And let's say, well, I want to see all the quotations, all the different ways the diversity was defined. So you can right click on any object in the network and add any of its neighbors, anything else this was associated. And then we can add those quotations. And so now we can see how all the different authors defined diversity. Right now it's just showing us the quotation name, but I wanna see the full content. Well, we can click on the view tab here at the top and we can see a preview of all of the quotations. So we see the actual full quotation here. And so here we also see that we can view comments. And so if you wrote comments on any of your objects, you can view them as well as frequencies to see how many quotations are associated with this code. And another really helpful thing is that we can apply automatic uh, design layouts to organize all of this. So we, when we add a lot of objects, you know, I can't even see it all, but we can have Atlas TI automatically uh, organize it for us so that we can easily see everything. But besides just looking at the quotations on my code, we can of course draw connections across all the different parts of our project. And so then maybe I could say, well, the, the way that diversity is defined is related to different opportunities. And so if we want to link any objects in a network, you'll just click on the little circle that appears in the corner and you click drag and drop. And then when you let go, you choose a name for this relation. So I am saying that opportunities are associated with how diversity is defined. And we have this link. And so we can link any of the objects, right? We can link quotations with quotations. Uh, we can link in memos as well. And you can create any kind of relation name that you want. You know, we're not limited to just these. So it's a really flexible uh, tool here that is just so helpful for starting to draw the connections across everything. You know, and you can start kind of painting a picture of how all of this is related. Or we can even build our theoretical framework here, our conceptual framework. And that's also something interesting to include in the final literature review. And then we can have some extracts from the literature showing what authors said. We can include our memos to show our own notes and reflections. And so we can really build any kind of network we'd like. And of course, we can make as many networks as we want. But the main idea is here that we can link all these different objects together. And by right clicking, you can add more uh, other objects, right, that were associated with this one. So you can keep exploring all the different connections here. And then, of course, you can export the network as an image. And it's great for presentations and, and final write-ups of your research. And so with that, we've seen our uh, overview of how Atlas TI can help with the literature review. And so I hope that this gives some ideas on different kinds of things you might want to code for and then write your notes and use networks. I really encourage you to use networks to explore because it just helps to draw everything out. And then we have all these other tools that you can use if you want to query it in different ways. You know, be that looking at word frequencies or automatically searching for words or comparing codings and things like this, you know, you have all of these things at your disposal. But naturally, uh, if you do ever have any questions about anything, you know, feel free to send an email or give a call and we'd be happy to help. And so I do apologize for going a little bit over time and I uh, thank you for your patience with my struggling computer here. I'm happy to answer any other questions if anyone has any. And so for example, uh, well, we have access to this recording. So, if you want the recording, please just send me an email and then I'll, I'll go ahead and pass it along to you. I think it'll take some time to, uh, to convert, to save, but later today or if not latest tomorrow, I'll, I'll send that to you so that you can watch it again. Yeah, so I know it's a lot of information in a short amount of time, but the main idea is that we read our articles and we can attach these tags, these codes to different segments to really organize everything. And we write all our reflections and analyses and memos. and then. When you work like this, I mean, the majority of the final write-up comes from the memos, because then we can see what we wrote in the memos, what quotations we have attached to those memos. And then it's just a matter of putting it together. And, and that's where we can polish it up and put proper spelling and grammar and all of these things. But I mean, the majority of the hard work is done in Atlas TI. So thank you everyone for the comments. I'm glad to hear that this was helpful. And uh, let me see, yes, a few more questions. Uh, so, yes, and also asking about searching for relevant text using a list of stop words, if that's possible. So, yes, so I'm happy to answer these questions. I understand if anyone else needs to, to go, feel free to, to disconnect. 
I can stay for a few more minutes. Uh, so yeah, this question about using, uh, if you wanna look for a particular list of words, in that case, you can use a go list. And so here, the word cloud or the word list is gonna be helpful. So let's just open up one here again. And so usually we use a stop list to exclude articles and prepositions and things like this. Like if I look for all of them, right? Unsurprisingly, B is the most frequently occurring word. So that's why we have stop lists. Now, if you wanna search for a particular list of words, you could put a go list. And if you click on edit, you can create any list that you would like. And so here you can make a new list Tell Atlas TI it's a goal. So the difference is stop is ignore these words. A goal list is only look for these words. And then I don't know, give it a, a topic here. And then you can write in any words you want. And so this is kind of another way to do it. But this will just make word clouds or word lists. So you can see the frequencies. But if you want to code for those words, then you need to use the text search tool. And yes, so uh, one more time, here is my contact information as well. Yeah, so if you have any more questions about your own project, just send me an email and then we can more uh, calmly go into detail on that. And so I hope that that answers uh, everyone's questions. And then to export and share your stop list with team members. So yes, uh, same here with when you click on the edit button for the stop and go lists you also have the option to export them. And so then you select a list and export. And it's just an Excel file. And then this is also good if you wanna edit it in Excel, you can also import lists. So yeah, again, that's very flexible in that sense. Same goes for codes. You can import and export your whole list of codes. Yeah, great. But yeah, any other questions, just uh, send an email to clients at atlasti.com and I'd be happy to, to help. Okay, so I hope I was able to answer everyone's questions then. And thanks again for your uh, patience <laughs> with my computer today. But I'm glad to hear that you enjoyed the presentation. So I hope that Atlas TI serves you all well in your literature reviews. And other than that, I just want to wish everyone lots of health and all the best in your research and your literature reviews. So take care, everyone, and have a great rest of the day. Bye.